right. Good evening, Cornerstone Baptist Church. If you would, let's stand. Nothing but the blood. We're going to sing that song tonight, page 195 in your hymnals. We'll start out with that. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, page 195. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood. but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Nothing but the blood of Jesus, not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. Makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood. remain standing for opening prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for blessing with this beautiful day, Lord, and pray, Lord, that uh, you be with us in our service tonight, be with our pastors, he delivers the message, and be with the orchestra as they uh, deliver the message in song, Lord, we pray in the precious name, amen. You would remain standing. This will be our handshaking song for this evening. Page 353, if you turn there, a shelter in the time of storm. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Amen. Amen. Page 353, the Lord's our rock. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever he'll be tied. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night. A shelter in the time of storm. No fears of harm, no foes of fright. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time of storm with a handshake this evening, if you would.
Verse number three, the raging storms. The raging storms may round us beat. A shelter in the time of storm will never leave our safe retreat. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is rocking a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is rocking a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Verse 4 there. Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of Man, great singing. You can be seated. All right. Well, good evening and welcome back to Cornerstone Baptist Church. And we're so happy to see you here tonight. Uh, we have a few announcements for you. We are in the Fourth Fest Parade, Lawrence Parade. And uh, so anybody that wants to come, we're going to have a float. Anybody wants to come be a part of the parade at 10 a.m. on July 4th could, is more than welcome to, uh, to join us. And then also we're going to have a booth set up uh, with the other booths, uh, vendors and things like that. And we're going to pass out gospel tracts and uh, witness to folks and get information about our school out. So if you're wanting to help us out at all, what we're going to do is we're going to have a uh, sign-up sheet. And if you wanted to give like an hour, you can. Um, if you don't want to stay the whole time, just tell us, just show up and then stay as long as you can. And that would be uh, really appreciated. Um, Speaking of the parade, we're going to need to put together quite a few bags uh, with flyers. And so tonight, if anybody can help us out, that would be a huge blessing. Uh, we need to put flyers and then put them in a bag, the blue bag, um, so we can have them to pass out for the parade. And so if you're able to stay just a little bit after the service tonight, we're going to set up in the cafeteria. And uh, many hands make like work. So if we can get as many of those put together as we could tonight, we plan on doing the same thing Wednesday, too. So Wednesday is going to be an abbreviated service, and we're going to ask anyone that can uh, that's here Wednesday to come and help us put more bags together. It doesn't seem like it's, it's not difficult. It's just time-consuming. So uh, you would help us out tremendously if you could stay and help us put bags, flyers in bags. It's zero physical demanding. You sit down and you put paper in a plastic bag. And if you could help us, that would be great. Right after the service, we're going to go down to the cafeteria and do that. And we're going to try to get, get a couple hundred done tonight. That would be a huge help. Um, also, we have the, the 4th, July 2nd, a patriotic picnic. And the tent service is going to be this upcoming Sunday. And so all the services will pretty much be out underneath the tent. And so we're looking forward to having a good day. Pray that there's no rain, okay? Pray that there's no rain. And the church is going to provide hot dogs. If you could bring in sides um, that go with hot dogs. If you're from Carolina, coleslaw goes on top of the hot dog. Anybody like that? Coleslaw on the dog? I'll pray for all of you. Okay. Um, there's baked beans is always good. Potato salad, bags of chips. Um, the church will bring, uh, provide the buns and hot dogs and drinks. Um, dessert is always popular. Um, so please bring in some stuff to help us out with that. Uh, Kids Club is this Saturday. Is this Saturday at 3 o'clock, and we're looking forward to it. Help us get the word out about that. Invite all of your friends, your neighborhood friends, your classmates, remind them about it, and let's pray for a good first uh, week of Kids Club this, this Saturday. And uh, also, right after the service, we're going to have a short meeting about that. I have the folders put together to hand out so you can look through. It's not even going to be me telling you everything that you can read on paper. It's just passing out the folders and then answering any questions you have. So we'll, we'll do that right after service, right here in the front of the auditorium. And then be in prayer for VBS July 16th through 19th. Looking forward to that. And going to speak a little bit more about that as it gets closer. A um, few folks in our prayer list. Pray for Mrs. Mitchell uh, with the migraines, the back pain, and also um, the dementia. Pray for Brother Pete Pointer who's sick. And then let's see here. Pray for uh, Mrs. Rueg with a blood clot. And then we also have... Um, 
Jim Mitchell with blood clot issues. Pray for him. And then, let's see here, pray for Mrs. Twig as she recovers. She's in, why can I never remember that name? Hamilton Trace. Hamilton Trace, okay? She's in Hamilton Trace recovering. And pray for her. And then pray for Elaine Hand. She uh, was in Saxony Hospital with an infection. Uh, pray for Tom Drummond. That's Brother Pete's friend. Has 30% of his heart still working. Mark Swafford as he recovers from heart surgery. And so many others on our prayer list. We'll go ahead and pray for the offering and continue with the service tonight. Dear Lord, <clears throat> we thank you for allowing us to be in your house together this evening. Uh, we ask now as we uh, sing praises and uh, worship you that uh, you would uh, receive these uh, worships and blessings that uh, we would be able to honor and glorify your name during our service tonight. We ask your blessing now on the offering as it's taken up. We ask you to further it uh, here locally in Lawrence as we see souls saved and families' uh, cha lives changed um, that we can see. Uh, strong uh, families uh, grow in you uh, here at the Cornerstone. We ask a blessing on our missionaries as they have services around the world. Open up hearts tonight that we can have um, souls make decisions that are um, growing closer to you. Be with our Spanish ministry this evening as well. Uh, bless the offering as it's taken up now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Let's stand once again. We're going to turn to page 204. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let's sing uh, all four verses tonight. Page 204. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Page 204. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. 
mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place when we all when we all get to heaven what a day what a day of rejoicing that will be when we when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. And shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the torch of light replay. When we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. And shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Thank you, men's trio, and uh, pray pray for those that are traveling. I know Brother Tar wanted to be here tonight, and just pray for their safety as they come back down, or come back, I keep thinking they're in Fort Wayne, but they're uh, down to Arkansas, so just pray for their safety as they're on their way back, and uh, miss having them here today. Uh, uh, he usually runs our one of our buses, and so just pray for their him and his family as they're on their way back, and uh, that was another funny story I'll tell you about in a minute, but let's turn to uh, uh, First Kings, if you would. Funny story that happened this morning on a bus route, and uh, just uh, kind of goes with the message tonight. We're going to be talking about God's perfect timing, and uh, how the uh, there are many, many passages. I'm only going to hit on a few tonight, uh, but we're going to look at First Kings chapter 18. And uh, how many people like the story about uh, different stories from Elijah's uh, his time? Uh, how many people like those type of stories? That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And uh, my former pastor loved uh, Elijah and just talking and preaching about him and Elisha and how all that, you know, it was, just a, it was a good uh, transition between Elijah and Elisha. And, uh, and, and, and God gave Elisha the double portion of what Elijah had. And so we're, we're looking in, uh, into his, uh, uh, one of his stories here, one of the stories that, uh, where God used him in a mighty way tonight, uh, chapter 18. We're actually going to start in verse 17 tonight. And we'll read a few, quite a few verses here uh, and co go through the story a little bit tonight. And uh, this goes uh, really along with, uh, perfectly along with God's perfect timing and how God showed himself to Elijah and to the people that Elijah were, uh, was uh, trying to get through to uh, and the, the challenge that was offered here between uh, Elijah and Ahab. And so we'll, we'll give you a little bit of background on that here in a moment. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, I don't, hopefully it won't be very long tonight, and, uh, and uh, we'll be looking forward to tonight after church, putting those bags together, because uh, my, fingers, my fingers are gone. Uh, I know Pastor knows what I'm talking about, trying to put all those flyers together. It feels like you're a banker, just, you know, either the banker or uh, uh, working at a gamb uh, gambling casino resort or something like that. That's what you're going to feel like after tonight. I'm just kidding. Uh, but it does wear out your fingers a little bit, so be looking forward to that tonight, getting those flyers together, and uh, it's just exciting to think about the, the what the potential could be behind that, and that we're giving out gospel tracts along with uh, flyers to get kids and folks to church, and you just you just don't know what God's going to do uh, with that, and so we'll we'll pray to that end that He's going to have His perfect will and way with that, all the flyers that are getting getting out there. So let's go ahead and go to Lord prayer. We'll look at what Elijah 
uh, the story of Elisha tonight and one of his uh, experiences, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get uh, moving forward with that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. Lord, we just thank you for all the, uh, the folks this morning that got baptized and the, people, the folks that joined the church, and we, the Lord just prayed you for it. And Lord, pray that you'd help those folks as they grow and help us to grow as well with them uh, spiritually. And Lord, just help us as we uh, come closer to you on a daily basis. Lord, help us to learn more tonight than we did yesterday. And uh, Lord, pray that you would help us to uh, have that kind of relationship that we want with you. Uh, that's close, and uh, Lord, that we can always come to the throne of mercy, and, and oh, Lord, seek your face, and Lord, we just thank you for uh, this building and these folks here, and Lord, just uh, pray, that, uh, pray for those that aren't able to be here, Lord, pray that you would uh, be with those in the hospital, uh, hospitals, and uh, pray you keep your healing hand on them, and Lord, we just love you, and thank you for everything you've given us, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, as we take a look into 1 Kings chapter uh, 18, uh, this is just a, a tidbit, it's not the start of the Elijah story, but it's kind of uh, an exciting time for Elijah as he uh, gets to challenge uh, this wicked king named Ahab, and we're going to read uh, verse 17 and on, and, uh, and it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Ahab's asking Elijah, Elijah this, that uh, Elijah seems to be the problem in this verse, but he is not. Verse 18, and Elijah answered, he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Another uh, false god there. Verse 19, now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered uh, all the prophets uh, together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long how, halt, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. So Elijah's feeling... He's feeling alone, but not really a feeling alone because God is with him all the way through this. Verse 23, let them therefore give us two bullocks and let that, them choose one bullock for themselves, cut into pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. And if the kids are looking for a word tonight, I don't know who wants to keep track tonight. Uh, Mrs. Morton, would you like to do that? Um, we'll, just, we'll just keep it simple. We'll make, keep it the word perfect. Uh, perfect timing. Okay, the clock starts now. So you're at zero. And we're going to look at God's perfect timing uh, through this story. And I mean, just if you can picture yourself, I always picture on the side of a mountain that, uh, like he said, Mount Carmel, he tells Ahab in verse 20 that, hey, let's gather, let's, let's, let's make a, a challenge out of this. Let's see who's really the true God in all this. And this is what we're going to do. He tells Ahab, which Ahab does listen in verse 21, Ahab uh, gathers the people and they are going to head up to Mount Carmel to uh, perform these different tasks and as we already read about in verse 23 that there's going to be one uh, one bullock each uh, on each side and so we're going to see some more uh, descriptive uh, type references to what is going to happen in this story uh, but they did agree they did agree to the challenge and uh, here we are at verse 25 they they said it is well spoken it sounds like a good plan Elijah uh, like they're they're fired up to see what's going to happen with their uh, god Baal and, that, and they served Balaam in verse 18. We see that. So they're, they're fired up about it. They're going to see what's going to happen. They, they definitely have trust in their God. But Elijah has uh, trust in his as well. And so verse 25, we're going to see Elijah and what his plan is uh, that God had uh, truly spoke to him about. And uh, we'll, we'll see what the challenge is here. Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, uh, remember there was uh, 450, so quite a few men. Quite a few men, if you were to fill up one of our buses, uh, our buses only hold, well, they hold 40 if you sit, uh, put uh, two to a seat. 
Uh, but you can imagine bus loads of prophets out in the parking lot. And uh, how many of you have been to the teen rallies here on a Friday night uh, when they've had them? And then they're usually about to 275, 300, right? So more than that even, more than that, it was pretty, pretty near, uh, definitely half filled this auditorium with the prophets that, that Elijah is up against. And so just, we always, we kind of forget how big these numbers are and how many prophets these people uh, he was against. But 450, but Elijah said unto these prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under and they took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it, called on the name of Baal from morning even, even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. And there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. So they're, they're up there trying to do their best, trying to, trying to give it all they've got to, to call out to Baal, to call out to their God. They're actually jumping up and down on the altar, leaping on the altar that they had created and they at that point they hadn't heard any uh, response from their God in verse 27 it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a God either he is talking or pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and uh, lancets until the blood gushed out upon them and it came to pass when midday was past, uh, the time is ticking throughout the day, and they're probably getting a little bit nervous, nothing's going on. <clears throat> uh, at that time, they prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired, uh, he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones. Uh, let, me, let me stop right there. Verse 30. Uh, does anybody know why that was broken down? Why was their altar broken down? I hadn't been worshiping uh, properly. So it was broken down and they, had, uh, they were leaping on it and all kinds of different things. And it wasn't done properly. So verse 31, Elijah, he's going to repair this broken down altar of the Lord that was broken down there. Um, and they took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, in whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the, all, he put the wood in order, cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill, your, fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time, and they did it the second time, and he said, do it the third time, and they did it the third time. How many people have ever tried to start a fire with wet wood? It is not fun at all. Um, there would be times I come home from church, and my wife would be like, we need a fire. And it's raining, and there's no tarp on the wood, because I forgot to put the tarp on the wood before church, or something, you know, wherever we were coming back from might have been work or whatever and I just look at it and I say there is not going to be a fire tonight because the wood is soaked with water and I forgot to tarp it so always make sure that that's uh, ready to go and uh, but so there was no fire so I don't know what we did she she probably still no I'm just kidding I had to go find uh, there was a fire eventually um, it wasn't yeah it was getting cold and we were just not going to have that so I had to find some, so I had to go down to the basement and find some scrap wood to get something started. But it's still not fun to, to do that. Um, you got to let that stuff dry. And, and uh, right now it's been so dry out, I think uh, anything would burn at this point. Uh, but here Elijah is a actually asking these, these men to, uh, to, to furthermore, uh, he, he knows that his end result. He knows that God's going to come through for him. And so he has um, just doused this thing with fill, uh, four, he said, fill four barrels of water and put it on the sacrifice and on the wood. And he had nothing to, no dry, nothing dry to start with, nothing at all dry to start with. And so that's what he had, to, that's what he wanted. He wanted to, he wanted, his end goal was to let God show himself through this burnt sacrifice. And he knew, he knew God was going to pull through for him. 
at his perfect timing. So he has him do it a second time and a third time. And after three rains on uh, some wood, you're really, really not going to get that stuff burning. And uh, I'd be out there, you know, uh, there was one time, uh, there's a story I didn't even think about. We, okay, so our former pastor, he wanted us to, <clears throat> he's like, we're going to have a bonfire. And I'm thinking, okay, we got all this wood out back behind the church that the, uh, they had uh, cut some trees down, had been sitting in a big old pile, you know, we probably should tarp that and let it dry because it's always wet. It's always soaked with moisture and everything. And so we got a fire going. Uh, we tried to get a fire going. Once again, wet wood. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm trying to be resourceful. If you, if you know me, I'm, I try to be as resourceful as I can. Um, I did not have anything to, you know, this, this, it needed oxygen to keep this thing going, to get this thing to start. Because once again, it was wet wood. We're working with what we got. And I thought, you know, church leaf blower. So we went and got the church leaf blower and uh, the little Ryobi or whatever. And that's how we got that fire going. And it was going pretty good. But once you took that leaf blower off, it just started dying right down. And so we, we just had to like, just literally, we set the leaf blower there to keep the fire going. And it, it did okay. But like I said, once you, once you took that off, and so it was, it was just wet. So it just does not burn very well at all. And it's just another example of that. And, uh, and the bad thing was he wanted it in a certain spot, but the bus was right there. Well, I didn't have the keys to the bus, so uh, we had to make it somewhere else to start with, and then once he got there, he moved the bus out of the way, and we got it. We had to move the whole fire back up to where the, the bus was. I was like, we are not lighting a bus on fire tonight, okay? So we're not even going to try that. Once rubber starts, it does not want to stop burning. So anyway, and uh, so we had moved that fire uh, once and, and tried to keep it going with that leaf blower. So, so wet wood does not want to burn, and, uh, and that's what Elijah was shooting for that. He's like, I'm going to make this absolutely awesome. He wa I want to set this up and show how, how awesome my God is and what the end result is going to be. And some of us, if you've never heard the story, you don't know what the end result is yet, but we will find out. And verse 35 will continue on. The water ran about the altar, ran about the altar, meaning all the way around. Uh, it, it, obviously, when you dump water on a pile of whatever, wood, uh, dirt, it's going to run off. And it's going to be probably trenched around. And that's what happened. The water ran about the altar all the way around and filled the trench also with water. There was a trench there that was filled with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice <clears throat> that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Okay, so obviously this was not something that he just came up with. God had told him to do this, and um, he 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 had done everything according to what God had told him at, at, that was at his at thy word, which was God's word. Verse thirty-seven: Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that thou art the God, the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is the God. And they said it, they repeated it twice. And they were for sure, they, at this point, they were for sure what they saw was real from the real God of Elijah and these other men that were listed, Abraham and Isaac and of Israel. And they had seen it for themselves. They had seen it firsthand. And unfortunately, sometimes we kind of live like that. We, we have to see things to believe it and see the evidence of things, even though somebody else may have said, hey, this is the way it is. We have some reason we just have to see it to know for ourselves. And these folks, uh, they had seen it, and they said, that, that is the true God. That is the one God that is the real God. It, it, after it consumed, uh, uh, stones are not supposed to be consumed in fire. I mean, it, would, it, would, it just does not happen. And God had showed himself through burning all this doused wet wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up literally licked up the water off the ground off, that was in that trench and it was gone and here they, they finally realized that he is the true God 
And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And so they had witnessed this awesome, this God's perfect timing that Elijah knew was going to happen. He had, Elijah had trusted in God, had listened to what he said in verse 39. Or, I'm sorry, 36, he listened to every word that God had told him to do. And uh, just a, just a, I don't have, I'm kind of sporadic on my points tonight, but uh, when, as we go through this, I'll, there's a, a couple lessons we can learn. We can learn in thir- verse 36 that if we listen to every word of God that he is telling us to do, and then that Holy Spirit's tugging on your heart, you don't want to walk away from that. There's times where you may be at the gas station. I was at the gas station the other day, and I, I might not speak Spanish, uh, but it's, it's worth giving a Spanish person a track and inviting them to church and saying, hey, we have a Spanish church here. And th- I, they, they might understand enough to understand that, hey, if I just come to this address, there's a Spanish church here. And a lot of times I'll say, hey, if you get to the property, we'll get you in the right direction. Uh, they don't need to know every little thing, but if they get here and we'll show them where the Spanish church is, we can even reach them too with the gospel. And so we need to listen to everything like Elijah did. He he had done all these things at God's word. And that was, that was part of the result of God's perfect timing. If he wouldn't have done those things, if he wouldn't have done uh, everything to the T that God had told him to do, this may never happen. This, it might not have been possible. We have to do our part in what God wants us to do. And, and, and Elijah did. He had listened to God. He said, this is what we're going to do. Four barrels of water, pour it on a burnt sacrifice. We're going to dig a trench. We're going to make this literally impossible in our human minds to do this for God to consume all this stuff up with fire he made it he made it that way and that's because God told him to do that because God had a plan of to show himself more powerful uh, than this uh, this other God Balaam or Baal and so we see that God's perfect timing in this in this story here um Years ago, uh, I, I think about all the stories, and you can think about this too as we talk about this, uh, God's perfect timing. And I think about uh, times where uh, even a year ago, we moved down here a year ago, uh, kind of brings those back to memory after one year anniversary or whatever. Uh, when we left, a uh, pastor kept calling me, and, and like they're, and everybody's anticipating us coming. We're anticipating getting here. And uh, I, I don't know what exactly I told you on the phone, but I probably said something like, We'll get there when we get there. Because we're like, we're like uh, 13 years that we live there. And we're trying to dig up everything out of the basement and everything on, you know, in the backyard that we let. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, trying to get everything rounded up because you just find that you have way too much stuff when you've been somewhere long enough. And, it, and the Snyders, I'm sure you can relate to that as well. Uh, yeah, we were like, okay, um, the whole roadside's got stuff. Somebody please take it. You're like, we don't want to haul this stuff. But uh, anyway, um, what had happened that night, we were supposed to be here, I don't even remember what time, 6 o'clock, 4.30, I don't even know. You, may, you set out a time and I'm just like, that ain't happening. It ain't going to happen because it takes like four hours to get here. We got too much stuff and we're trying to pack the truck, you know, so uh, a mouse couldn't even breathe in there, that type of thing. And uh, you're just trying to get all this stuff in there. And what happened was uh, we, we, we were literally literally hooking up to the trailer and there was we were almost ready to leave and the brakes went out on the truck and you know at the moment you're thinking we want to get out of here we need to get going down the road there's people waiting here ready to help us unload but <clears throat> I could see that that was God's perfect timing at that time my dad said something like hey you got a broken brake line on the back end of your truck and my wife's gonna drive it well she was up till that point so <laughs> Anyway, and so we're, we had to fix it, but that would have been a whole lot better, and it was a whole lot better than if we would have got two hours down the road, and a brake line goes out, and, you know, I don't know what would have happened after that. Uh, my wife's hauling a trailer, a 12-foot line. It's not a real big trailer, but it's still, the uh, uh, Lord was watching out for my wife, watching out for our family. And so we fixed it, and my neighbor had some extra brake lines, another thing that God just, his, he had everything worked out. The neighbor had the right brake line. I put it back in there. 
we got on the road, not at a decent time, but we got on the road safely. And uh, one more instance like that, brake line, uh, how, many, how many of you have brake line failures? And just it's just lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Um, one more story about brake lines. Uh, pink car, pink car, the Sanix pink car, they remember that. The old Ford Escort, it was so faded. It used to be red. I think it was red, but it was pink after many, many years. Anyway, brother-in-law and I, uh, not Pastor Morton, but another brother-in-law of mine, uh, once again, we jumped into it the night before, checked blinkers, checked stuff like that, broken brake line. And God had spared, uh, uh, spared us you know, from having any accidents. Uh, we were going to drive that from French Lake, Indiana, all the way to Gaylord, and uh, Michigan, Gaylord, Michigan, and God had said, you know what, this is, I'm going to have this happen here, I'm going to have this happen now, and uh, we got it fixed, and God, God put those things, I truly believe he put those things in the road, in our road, and we might have felt like it was a stumbling block to us, but in God's whole uh, picture of things, he knew it was going to happen, he knew it was, could have broken on the road, we just happened to be out there uh, we said, well, just check, the, check things around, you know, check things out. And so God had allowed that to happen to keep us safe and, and to watch over us um, and to, to make sure that we were going to be safe. And I really, truly feel like every time we, we pray for each other, we pray for, you know, we, we might think it's simple us driving home from church, but anything can happen from here to there. And just keeping us safe, the God keeping us safe from, from point A to point B, a lot of things can happen. And you've seen some pretty crazy accidents on Pendleton Pike. Uh, anything can happen, okay, if you've seen anything out there. And so just praise the Lord for every time that he gets you home safely and gets you to the point you need to be safely. And uh, just thinking about those, God's perfect timing, and those, those are the, some of the instances that come up in my mind where it could have been catastrophic had, it, uh, had we uh, got on the road the next day and just uh, uh, didn't know that it was an issue even. And so, but here we see Elijah in his story. He's trying to prove his God, and he, he he for sure did because they all turned to his God and acknowledged his God. And a lot of the story kind of resembles what happened with Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar, if you think about that story. And uh, how finally Nebuchadnezzar turned and, uh, from his ways for a moment and acknowledged God and how powerful he was. Let's go to 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. We're going to look at more, just a few more verses, and I'll, I'm not going to be real long tonight. Uh, more verses on God's perfect timing. And it's just exciting to me that, that God watches out for us all the time. He watches out for us. Uh, uh, once again, uh, no, it wasn't a life or death situation, but God got us the house we needed at the right time. We got, got some, uh, the Schneiders moved in at the right time. Perfect timing within days. And I talked about that in Sunday school class. But he always I just pray that way that God would show you the way and be patient as he shows you that way, uh, whatever uh, direction you need to go. And um, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9, we see uh, some verses just kind of forewarning us uh, what we should do um, when we get pa impatient. How many people get impatient? Right here, I'm, I'm one of them, I'm one of them. So a few of us, okay, we get impatient. And, uh, okay, I, I, I didn't mean to start anything, but anyway. So we get impatient, and <clears throat> some of that's, you know, we blame that on our grandparents. Maybe we got that from our parents. We got that impatience um, from them. Um, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. But some of us get impatient. Uh, verse number eight, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But what is the Lord? He is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, this is speaking more of the uh, just getting to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Okay, we need to start with repentance. Repentance is what we need to do. Repent of our sins. And, uh, uh, you know, not that we're not going to sin again, but... To, to repent, to acknowledge the fact that we have done wrong and that we need a Savior. That's repentance. And acknowledge the fact that we have done wrong and that we need a Savior. So he's not slack concerning his promise. He said he would be there for us, and he will. In his perfect timing. And we need to remember that in his perfect timing. I always think about that when you pray in God's perfect timing. I'm going to pray for this. In God's perfect timing. We gotta, that'll keep us humble. That'll keep us patient. 
to remember that, you know, we want it now. Sometimes we want it in six months. Sometimes we, we, most of the time we want it right now when we think about it. And um, isn't that always funny? When you go into the stores, you know, it's like, I always love this. Uh, you know, just the way humans are, I guess. But you get into the hot season, everybody starts thinking about AC. So they go get you know, a window unit, and then, you know, Walmart runs out of them, and everybody's trying to kill each other getting an oh, AC window unit. And it's like, you guys knew this was coming. Like, we are human. We know this is coming. And we forget that uh, we, we don't think ahead of time all the time. So we get impatient. We get impatient. We need things now. We need things, you know, that, uh, that old Burger King mentality that we get it the way you want it and all that stuff is not always the way to be. We need to humble ourselves and remember that God is not slack concerning his promise, but he's long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish. We need to be patient uh, and wait on him. Um, and don't be, you know, once again, verse 8, don't be ignorant of the, the one thing that one day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years as is one day. And so his, his time clock's a whole lot different than ours. His time clock's a whole lot different. Uh, uh, I didn't have the verse down, but our, our life is but a vapor. I didn't have that verse down. It's nothing but a vapor. It's a hundred years goes by very quickly. Let's go to Proverbs 16, verse 9. A couple more verses and um, I want to look at tonight. Proverbs 16, verse 9. And then I'm going to stay in Proverbs for a little bit, um, just to, because uh, we're already there. Talking about the Lord and his direction, and just trusting in him for God's direction. Very simple verse, uh, Proverbs 16, verse 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. So if we can really put our full trust into the Lord and our faith into God, he will direct our steps. He's going to tell us where to go. Another uh, uh, very simple, uh, I'm sure you, many of you have been in this situation where maybe you were younger, and you know, when you're young, uh, you make one decision, it, can really, it really can change your whole life. And uh, once, uh, where I met my wife, I met her at Bible college and um, did not, had no interest in going to Bible college, believe it or not. Um, but I had some sisters that were already up there and uh, finishing up my degree at Michigan State. Uh, and I just uh, just wanted to get on with life, I guess, and wanted to get back, get, get to working, making some money and trying to pay off the college debt and all that stuff. And uh, God really tugged on my heart just to go check it out. And um, I think the December before I went to school, I seen her. And, uh, and that's not why I went to college, but... Anyway, I, before I even uh, enrolled, uh, I was up there like right after, must have been right after finals or something like that. And uh, uh, anyway, I, just, I, I was just glad to walk across the campus of MSU being all done there. I'm like, this is finally here. It's done. I'm done. I'm so tired of it because there's so much studying to do. And how many of you like studying? Just depends on what you're studying, right? If you're interested in it, then you're, then you're loving it. If you're not interested in it. Uh, but anyway, so I was just glad to be done. And I was like, you know, maybe I'll just go ahead and check it out. So I went up in December and, and then uh, seen her. And uh, I think we actually ate across from the same table that day for some reason. But anyway, so that was uh, uh, God. But God led me there. And uh, you can say the rest is history, I guess. But um, and so I uh, got to meet her and to know her a little bit. And uh, it was so funny because the first summer, I got to tell this real quick. The first summer, um, you know, I thought, yeah, she's, you know, whatever. She's really too good for me and all this stuff, you know, the high school mentality. And uh, you kind of feel like, yeah, she, she deserved better. And then uh, like all summer long went by, almost all summer long. And then I randomly just called because you guys were like inviting me to church down there or something for a, a roundup Sunday. And so, so I called, and they said it was okay. Well, her mom said it was okay, and she said it was okay. Didn't ask her dad. That's a big no-no. And so I went down, and I'm sitting next to Rebecca, and we're not engaged or anything. We're just, we're not even dating. And then he calls me, uh, her dad calls me out after church. Uh, Come on into the office here. What did I do? Like, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I did. 
And he's like, you didn't think to ask me first before you came to church down here? I'm like, I, I just wanted to come to church. But anyway, so that was kind of a funny, intimidating, but it was, it was real in my mind. So that's how I, that's how I first met her. And uh, so then it kind of sparked up the relationship again. And anyway, so um, uh, did it the right way and, uh, uh, you know, was uh, pure all the way to the altar and, and, and married her uh, July of 2009. And so, anyway, so next time, yeah, any, any young man always ask permission, uh, even if you're just going to church, ask permission. And especially if you're sitting next to, the, uh, next to their daughter, too. So just a side note there, you might want to write that down. Uh, I had to learn the hard way. Uh, but anyway, so back to God's perfect timing. We see a man's heart devises its ways, but the Lord directs his steps. So when you're young, going back to that point, when you're young, uh, let God direct your steps. Ask him for guidance. You know, it's not easy when you're young and teenager to find what God's will is. That's the toughest thing. I mean, it's, it's like, I don't know. I, I want to do this. I want to do this. Uh, you know, I got certain things I want to do, but what does God want me to do? That's what matters. Uh, what can God u- use you in? And it's awesome to see teenagers being used right now. Teenagers being used in VBS. Teenagers being used here now you don't have to wait the pastor preached on this a while back you don't have to wait to serve the lord you don't have to wait till you're 25 and you're in your prime and all that stuff you can serve the lord now even in, even when you're a kid you can serve the lord in the best way that you can ecclesiastes 3 1 let's go uh, over there ecclesiastes 3 1 Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back to Proverbs 27.1. I'm sorry. Let's stop. Let's, uh, let's, yeah, we were right there. I'm sorry. We were already there. Uh, 27.1, uh, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We truly don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We just need to continue to trust the Lord in his timing, in his perfect timing. So we need to remember that we, we, we may know what's on our calendar for tomorrow, but what does God have in store for us tomorrow? Lamentations 3, 25 through 26 is another good reference as well. Uh, Lamentations 3, 25 through 26. And uh, write that down, and, and then we'll come back to that in a minute. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, let's, let's ac- actually turn over to that one because we're already right here. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Turn there if you would. Uh, another, some more uh, direction in your paths, uh, type verses, to, uh, different uh, pointers to help you uh, in your direction. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Okay? Even when it doesn't make sense to us, after those, remember those stories I was talking about, the break lines and different things, we don't understand it, we're frustrated, we just, we can't, you know, we just can't, we want to get on the road, we want to go do this, we want to go do that. Uh, we need to trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not unto thine own understanding, meaning we can't always lean on our own minds and thinking, well, this doesn't make sense right now in my own mind, but we need to lean on, the, lean on God and his understanding. In all thy ways, verse 6, in all thy ways, everything that you do, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Acknowledge him in everything that you do. Anytime you have a promotion at work or somebody says something nice about you, just Say, hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that I had the health and ability to do the things that God wants me to do. Praise the Lord that, you know, this morning, uh, broke, the bus broke down. Uh, basically, the AC is killing the batteries right now, this time of year on every vehicle, if your battery is old and the bus broke down. But God had, I think, really, God has something going on there because we ran into somebody that had a pair of jumper cables and he come helped us out. And I called Brother Rue this morning. I said, hey, I got a problem. I need somebody to come with jumper cables. And then I called him like 30 seconds later. I said, never mind. And there was somebody that had ran up and said, hey, you need some help. And so I, I, once again, I, I, I was talking about that earlier, about inviting him to the Spanish church. It was very helpful. So God has his perfect timing. I don't know what he's going to do with that. But, you know, we'll leave that in God's hands and trust in him. So just a few things here. Uh, to wrap up, God's perfect timing, is ne- it may not be in our, in our own timing and in our own minds make any sense. Lean not unto thy own understanding, and we need to trust in him as we do that. 
And so just a few, uh, few different verses there. Um, now let's go, let's go back to Ecclesiastes 3.1. This is another uh, verse I did not have in my notes. One second. And then we have another one, another one more verse in Lamentations. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 it says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven a time to be born a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck up that which was planted and I just wanted to read mainly that one verse but this is a verse we we think about when we think about funerals we think about uh, different uh, big uh, events in a lifetime and so to everything there is a season a time to every purpose under heaven we don't like once again we don't understand God's timing but we just need to continue to trust in him that he will provide the increase. Also, Lamentations chapter 3. Let's go over there and uh, we'll wrap up for tonight. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 25 through 26. Well, this is kind of going back, not directing your steps as much as it is waiting for him and being patient. Uh, it talks about that here, to wait on the Lord. Uh, verse 25 and 26 says, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. He, it, or sorry, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. So we need to remember, just, we just need to be patient. Wait on him for everything that uh, we need an answer to. It may not be right now. It may, we might have to wait uh, uh, several years to, to wait on that answer. But if we're patient... And, and God's perfect timing. I know we, you know, of course, we, anybody that's uh, moving from one point to another, you want to have a place to call home. And uh, we, we didn't, you know, we, uh, we appreciate the mission house, uh, but uh, we knew God had a home for us, and we're just, we're just waiting on his perfect timing. And it was, I mean, it was perfect timing. It was, it's, it's crazy. And uh, we're just waiting on him to provide, uh, especially in a time like this. Um, I remember coming down here, uh, that was the highest I've ever seen gas prices. And it's like, why, Lord, why are we moving when it's like the highest gas prices that I've ever seen in my lifetime? And, uh, and, and anyway, when I started driving, it was $1.40. And, and uh, many of you, how many, how many of you were driving when it was like 15 cents a gallon? 100 years ago, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it was, maybe it was never that low. I don't know. Anyway, it was high. It was over $5 a gallon when we moved. And it's like, you just don't understand that. It doesn't make sense. It's like, why, why God? Why, why now? Why, why, you know, why can't we wait till the, yeah, wait till something? I don't know. The gas prices are high. It's expensive to move and uh, just trying to, uh, trying to make sense of things. But in God's perfect timing, we can understand and we'll understand it. Uh, we'll understand all of it when we get to heaven. Amen. We'll understand. Some of it we can understand as we wait, be patient and wait on the Lord and we can understand it and six months sometimes he'll let us understand it in three years or whatever it may be but wait on God's perfect timing and he will he will bring uh, you uh, the right answers at the right time and uh, like I said my wife is a, a perfect example just waiting on the Lord and going doing what God told me to do he told me to go to college told me uh, to marry told me to marry her for sure if I didn't uh, I would have been a, a pretty dumb for not not I, I don't know why she said yes, but she did, and uh, just praising the Lord for what God has given you. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be happy. He doesn't want you to settle for safe. If you're really following him and being faithful, uh, just, I got other stories too, but just out of high school, you know, I had other ideas and different things, and God had something way better than that. God had uh, a wife prepared for me already that was uh, following in the footsteps of, of uh, what she was supposed to be doing too and um, and that's another uh, one more story I'll be done uh, this is about uh, putting you on spot Leah but she was talking about coming up to grace too and you know she can tell you more about that about why God told her to stay down in Florida and you know she got to marry Pastor Morton there so there you go I'll 
combined all that together. And so just, just uh, be thinking about that. Think about that and praise God for those things. Praise God for those things. Maybe, maybe it was 20 years ago, maybe it was 30 years ago. Still praise him today for that, okay? Don't forget that. Don't forget what God's done for you and uh, his perfect timing through all that. So let's go ahead and stand and we'll, uh, we'll have a, a, just a short invitation. We'll have our musicians come and we'll, we'll stand and we'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for each and every one here that's been faithful to, uh, to Cornerstone Baptist Church, faithful to you more, more overall, and uh, just being uh, servants of you and always just uh, taking a huge part and uh, serving you and, and doing what's right. Lord, just thank you for your perfect timing. Lord, we don't understand it, and uh, we're not meant to understand all the time. And we just thank you for uh, giving us the things that we need when we do need them. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would give us a, a good, uh, 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 drawing us closer to you and a good time tonight as we dismiss and pray that you would keep us safe on the roads as well and be with those, Lord, as they uh, are at the hospitals and different folks that can't be here tonight. Lord, pray that in your perfect timing that you would uh, keep your hand upon them and that you would heal them or help them recover. And uh, Lord, just thank you for all that you do. Pray for those that aren't saved tonight. If anybody's here that's not saved, this is the time to get saved. This is the perfect time uh, to do that, to make a choice uh, to uh, have a Savior and uh, to have that relationship with Jesus tonight. And we just thank you for uh, all that you've given us and all that you've blessed us with. Help us not to forget those things in the past that have uh, been so uh, needed. And, uh, Lord, that you would help us to remember those things in the future. And, Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so if the Lord spoke into your heart, please do business and you can come forward. The altar is open, uh, whatever you like to do tonight. Um, God's perfect timing is always best. God's timing is always best. And maybe tonight his timing is, is now for you to be saved. Maybe you need to be saved here tonight. If there's somebody here that doesn't know that for sure, you can get that settled tonight for, and, and never doubt it. You can get that settled and nailed down tonight. Whatever God's spoken your heart about, please be obedient to as the music plays and uh, the singers sing. Well, we got something uh, exciting to share with you tonight. Um, the Spees family has been visiting with us for um, a few weeks now, and they're moved from Kentucky, uh, Winchester, Kentucky, and uh, they've come this they've come this evening to be joined to our church membership. I've uh, spoken with them. They they've both been scripturally saved and baptized already, and so they're actually going to be coming by letter. And it looks like they were a part of um, Landmark Baptist Church in Winchester, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And so we're happy to have them. And he has Jacob here. Jacob is the, is the son. And there is Gabriel. Gabriel is in the nursery. And so, um, brother, we want, we, we want to welcome you to our church family. And we're going to ask you to come, come forward here tonight. If you guys would stand up. And it's not too bad looking out here. But if you could just come forward and turn around and look out. And we'll be dismissed in prayer tonight. And if you guys would come by and uh, shake their hand and welcome them into our church membership tonight. And uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. And then after you shake in their hand, anyone that's able to, go down to the cafeteria and help us stuff bags. All right, but um, anybody that can, it would be a huge blessing. I understand if you can't. Um, but we're looking forward to having a good a good uh, event for the, the festival and the parade. We'll probably m reach more people in that parade than we will all year in just conversating with people at their doors. So please be in prayer. Please do what you can. If that means sitting down in an air-conditioned cafeteria and putting flyers in a bag, or just pray. So anything helps, and we're uh, looking forward to having a good, good um, event that day.
Well, let's go ahead and be dismissed in prayer. Brother Gerber, would you dismiss us tonight? And you come down and shake the Spies family's hand. Dear Heavenly Father, as we are dismissed tonight, Lord, Lord, help us to be the shining lights that you've called us to be in this Lawrence area and our surrounding area. Lord, help us to proclaim the gospel and invite others to church and uh, give them uh, the true uh, gospel uh, that you died on the cross for my sins and their sins and, and that you provide a pathway back to you uh, through salvation. Lord, thank you for providing that for us. Uh, thank you for the families that have uh, joined today. Thank you for the baptisms. Uh, Lord, continue to bless and lead our uh, this church uh, in the way that we need to go, Lord. And uh, Lord, uh, continue to bless in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.